Hi, this is chapter three of Intramuros by Rebecca Springer, read by me, Kim Droptini. Chapter three. After a short rest in this lovely room among the books, my brother took me through all the remaining rooms of the house, each perfect and beautiful in its way, and each distinctly and imperishably photographed upon my memory. If only one other will I speak at this time. As he drew aside the gauzy gray draperies, lined with the most delicate shade of amber, which hung before the column doorway of a lovely room on the second floor of the house, he said, your own special place for rest and study. The entire second story of the house, indoors, instead of being finished in gray marble, as was the first floor, was finished with inlaid woods of fine satiny texture and rare polish. And the room we now entered was exquisite, both in design and finish. It was oblong in shape, with a large bowed window at one end, similar to those in the library, a portion of which was directly beneath this room. Within this window on one side stood a writing desk of solid ivory, with silver appointments, and opposite was a case of well-filled bookshelves of the same material. Among, among the books I found afterward were many of my favorite authors. Rich rugs, silver gray in color, lay scattered over the floor, and all the hangings in the room were of the same delicate hue and texture as those at the entrance. The framework of the furniture was of ivory, the upholstering of chairs and ottomans of silver gray cloth with a finish of finest satin and the pillows and covering of the dainty couch were of the same. A large bowl of wrought silver stood upon the table near the front window filled with pink and yellow roses whose fragrance filled the air and several rarely graceful vases also were filled with roses. The entire apartment was beautiful but beyond description, but I had seen it many times before I was fully able to comprehend its perfect completeness. Only one picture hung upon the walls, and that was a life-size portrait of the Christ, just opposite the couch. It was not an artist's conception of the human Christ, bowed under the weight of the sins of the world, nor yet the thorn-crowned head of the crucified Savior mankind, but the likeness of the living master, of Christ the victorious, of Christ the crowned. The wonderful eyes looked directly and tenderly into your own, and the lips seemed to pronounce the benediction of peace. The ineffable beauty of the divine face seemed to illumine the room with a holy light, and I fell upon my knees and pressed my lips to the sandaled feet so truthfully portrayed upon the canvas, while my heart cried, Master, beloved Master and Savior. It was long before I could fix my attention on anything else. My whole being was full of adoration and thanksgiving for the great love that had guided me into this haven of rest, this wonderful home of peace and joy. After some time spent in this delightful place, we passed through the open window onto the marble terrace. A stairway of artistically finished marble wound gracefully down this terrace to the lawn beneath the trees. No pathway of any kind approaching at its foot, only the flowery turf. The fruit-laden branches of the trees hung within easy reach from the terrace, and I noticed as I stood there that morning seven varieties. One kind resembled our fine Bartlett pear, only much larger and infinitely more delicious to the taste, as I soon found. Another variety was in clusters, the fruit also pear-shaped, but smaller than the former, and of a consistency and flavor similar to the finest frozen cream. A third, something like a banana in shape, they called breadfruit. It was not unlike our dainty finger rolls to the taste. It seemed to me at the time, and really proved to be so, that in variety and excellence, food for the most elegant repast was here provided without labor or care. 
My brother gathered some of the different varieties and bade me try them. I did so with much relish and refreshment. Once the juice from the pear-like fruit, whose distinctive name I have forgotten, if indeed I ever knew it, ran out profusely over my hands and the front of my dress. Oh, I cried, I have ruined my dress, I fear. My brother laughed genially as he said, show me the stains. To my amazement, not a spot could I find. Look at your hands, he said. I found them clean and fresh, as though just from the bath. What does it mean? My hands were covered with the thick juice of the fruit. Simply, he answered, that no impurity can remain for an instant in this air. Nothing decays, nothing tarnishes, or in any way disfigures or mars the universal purity or beauty of the place. As fast as the fruit ripens and falls, all that is not immediately gathered at once evaporates, not even the seed remaining. I had noticed that no fruit lay beneath the trees. This, then, was the reason for it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, I quoted thoughtfully. Yes, even so, he answered, even so. We descended the steps and again entered the flower room. As I stood once more admiring the inlaid roses, my brother asked, Whom of all the friends you have in heaven do you most wish to see? My father and mother, I answered quickly. He smiled so significantly that I hastily turned, and there, advancing up the long room to meet me, I saw my dear father and mother and with them my youngest sister. With a cry of joy, I flew into my father's outstretched arms and heard with a thrill of joy his dear familiar, my precious little daughter. At last, at last, I cried, clinging to him. At last, I have you again. At last, he echoed with a deep drawn breath of joy. Then he resigned me to my dear mother and we were soon clasped in each other's embrace. My precious mother, my dear, dear child, we cried simultaneously. And my sister, enfolding us both in her arms, exclaimed with a happy laugh, I cannot wait. I will not be left outside. And disengaging one arm, I threw it about her in the happy circle of our united love. Oh, what an hour that was. I did not dream that even heaven could hold such joy. After a time, my brother, who had shared our joy, said, Now I can safely leave you for a few hours to this blessed reunion, for I have other work before me. Yes, said my father, you must go. We will, with joy, take charge of our dear child. Then for a brief while, goodbye, said my brother kindly. Do not forget that rest, especially to one but recently entered upon the new life, is not only one of the pleasures, but one of the duties of heaven. Yes, we will see that she does not forget that, said my father, with a kindly smile and glance. End of chapter three. I hope you are enjoying listening to Intramuros. If you like it, please tell your friends, please tell other people so they can enjoy it too. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.